welcome here in Kepler's Garden in Linz, Austria, the place where the Ars Electronica 2020 edition is taking place. We would like to introduce you and invite you in a little journey where we want to show you the main elements of the, this year's festival. The main elements are different parts of exhibition projects. We have the Starts Prize winners, the best what this combination of art and technology for the benefit of society can offer. Then we have the projects coming from the university. And besides this, we have a garden exhibition of an incredible range of artworks that are exhibited, not inside, but outside. Yes, and many, many different aspects are there to find. Uh, one main aspect is Create Your World, which is uh, the festival for the younger generation. What they are going to do there is not to exhibit in the traditional uh, sense, uh, they are actually exhibiting themselves. They are using this festival in this time of a pandemic to meet for a social gathering. And then we have the LIT projects, a collaboration between the local uh, institutions and the creatives, artists from outside. With those, we want to show that there are uh, alternative ways for creating innovation. Exactly, and then the garden exhibition. So this is the third part of the trias of those exhibition projects. And they give an additional not just an aesthetic aspect, but also quite a humoristic one. Um, when you walk through the parks, when you meander around the buildings and you find artwork that highlight very ecological topics, very pressing ones, but also have a, a charm in the way they introduce those topics. And as a third, uh, as the last part actually, um, we have an insight into our online festival into the world of the more than 120 partners. Yes, and uh, yeah, back to the place. <laughs> this all is happening in quite a wonderful place. If you remember back uh, where the last edition took place in the cool environment of this post-industrial post-city, we landed now in a wonderful environment close to nature close to the elements, <laughs> close to rain, uh, and uh, we hope you enjoy this. The place we are standing now is just another wonderful spot in the Kepler's Garden here in Linz. It is the learning center that is uh, built on top of the library. It totally is. new. I mean, I think we are the first uh, uh, before the students occupying this, transforming this place into a place for exhibiting rather interesting projects. And it is one project that we would like to uh, uh, put in focus um, that is coming from these uh, lit projects uh, that we mentioned before. It is about uh, the collaboration among the local uh, institutes uh, with third um, uh, creative people, uh, creative institutions from outside. We are talking now about uh, a very interesting project, uh, the Pangolin Scales. It is a project about brain-computer interfaces. Exactly, it's a collaboration between Thomas Fasit and Harald Prettel coming from the university, as well as Christopher Guger representing GTEC, his company, and in collaboration with Anu Wibrecht, uh, a Dutch artist based in the US. What they are doing and why they are utilizing the festival uh, for such a um, scientific, prototypical project is that uh, the technology that we have in our hands uh, is absolute state of the art. The resolution of this brain computer, uh, brain computer interface is, has never been uh, um, seen uh, on this globe and it opens vast new opportunities, opportunities for medical purpose, for curing patients, for instance, uh, with, uh, um, uh, with stroke and the effects uh, of stroke. <laughs> It is uh, a wonderful sample also for a collaboration between scientists, engineers and creative people. And it is a project that uh, is, uh, that's why embedded into our festival because uh, the driver, the protagonist of this project, they are aware um, of utilizing the festival as a playground for uh, strange thinkers, creative thinkers. So what they are doing, they 
simply throw this technology into the round of creative dudes, nerds and geeks and, uh, and uh, they are simply waiting what the outcome is for self-inspiration. Exactly. So we ha will have physical hackers as well as online hackers participating exactly in this PCI hackathon. And on the other side, we will have a physical exhibition of this new PCI with the resolution of 1024 mini brain sensors that translate the signals coming from the brain into a dress, a fashionable dress, the movement of the dress as well as light signals showing which part of the brain is currently active. Don't miss that part of the festival. And now to another wonderful and very interesting project, uh, also coming from this context of the lit projects. We have here the project called Enacting Innovation and one of the initiators, Judith Ingelsberg, is standing right next to us. Together with Friedrich Kirschner, they have been working uh, endlessly in the past month uh, to develop this project that you can see in the background. And during the festival, we will have workshops where the participants can use those stages, those setup to go and understand this idea of what does innovation mean and how is innovation actually created. So what we do is we think about innovation as an imperative that is uh, omnipresent in all kinds of fields, not in the classical, not only in the classical ones like industry or uh, uh, research. Um, it's pretty, it's pretty prevalent everywhere in society now. And what we wonder is, with this pressure to be constantly uh, innovative. Uh, how do different organizational actors follow this? And what does it also mean uh, for society um, if there is like maybe one way to follow this, if there are certain actors invited always to become uh, innovators and if others are maybe not included in this, into these processes, etc. <laughs> and what we do here is we really um, want to make uh, this uh, uh, this experience of being an innovator um, tangible to the festival audience. So uh, we invite people to participate in our innovation simulation and uh, also start thinking about um, when we want to be innovative, what are the repertoires we can be drawing on <coughs> and what other ways that could also be interesting we might not even think of. Very, very interesting and uh, almost ironic if we look uh, at the time where we are currently doing this or trying to realize this. Uh, so innovation is obviously related to environment, to atmosphere, uh, to a set uh, where innovation as social, as a social, yes. um, how should I say this, uh, um, well, sculpture at the end, <laughs> among yeah. others, uh, would, be, would be possible. And uh, in times of... Uh, social distancing or physical distancing, this uh, uh, research question, from my point of view, is reaching a total new category. Uh, and uh, was it before state of the art? Is it now, I don't know if this is, uh, um, uh, if I can say this, a double state of the art. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Yes, uh, we you. move on yes. and um, we see you at the festival here. <laughs> And now to the last project in the learning center on top of the library. Um, this project has also this dimension as electronica, uh, this critical dimension as electronica has so deeply embedded uh, into our DNA. Um, it is about uh, at the end what we want of machines, where we want them to be when they are like uh, intelligent creatures. We are actually presenting you now two projects that come out of the law faculty of this university. And one of them is called AI Truth Machine. And here we actually have an actual truth machine that was flown in from the US where a system like that is already used in, um, in the court to determine whether someone tells the truth or not. Mm -hmm. They are taking the data out of the pupils out of the pupils of the eyes and they ask you a question have you taken the money or not mm -hmm. and I, we heard that 95 percent 
it is detected whether you took the money or not. Yeah, so it is, a, it is an interactive participatory project. Uh, our guests can come here and uh, um, they are actually asked to hide some money in exactly. some trezors and then uh, uh, they get connected to this machine. And uh, yeah, the people setting up currently, they say that they are pretty sure that the machine wins. If we want the machine winning, or not, it's up to you. We are continuing our journey now. Exactly. We followed the wide majestic staircase to the ground floor. We are standing in front of this beautiful new building and in front of this fantastic, very colorful artwork. This piece is made by Yuri Suzuki. It's called the Welcoming Choir, and that actually is also its purpose here. It is an interactive, uh, very, very, very yeah. playful uh, um, art piece. Welcome. And uh, what uh, the interaction will be there is that we have three microphones over there for uh, each man and woman size uh, one. And uh, you can quote something, you can like sing something, uh, just a little snipsel, and then uh, the software would transform this into some kind of choirs. What's so ironic and humorous on this is that Yuri, Yuri is for sure a born Japanese, coming from the Japanese culture, and uh, he started to develop this project with Japanese choirs, children choirs at the end. And so what we have at the end is something that is very similar to uh, the culture of the Ars Electronica Festival. It is a mashup of all cultures, influenced, inf uh, cultural influences that are creating at the end the song. We're standing underneath the Learning Center in the heart of the Johannes Kepler University. And behind us is an artwork that is called Machine in Flux. And two incredible artists, both based in the Netherlands, but representing two different worlds. Sun Jo Lee um, is actually coming from Korea, currently living in Europe. And uh, this wonderful art piece um, um, has quite a lot of potential uh, in it. It is measuring in real time uh, environmental data that is available. The outcome, it is something that uh, reminds us of uh, these marvelous and wonderful images when, you, when you're slicing a tree, when you can read actually, so to speak, uh, the year and the life of a tree. Exactly, they take the data from the environment, the wind, the heat, the humidity, and transform this into the graphics that then in the end display the year rings of the tree. Yes. And here, like in a real tree, actually you can see if it is a cold winter, the rings look differently than in a very hot summer. And this is what they transform into their art piece. And thereby very much represent actually the genre of media art, the potential responsibility and task of an artist to really point their fingers onto our current top problems, asking questions, giving ideas of how we could move into our futures together. Thank you.